guys, it's Lauren, and today I'm going to show you how to execute smooth transitions and more specifically smooth graphs. So I'm going to be doing this in terms of Blurmo Curves, which is a Sapphire plugin similar to Transform. But if you don't have this plugin, just use Transform and apply the same techniques. So primarily to achieve smooth transitions, you must overlap your keyframes. So first I'm going to show you what it looks like when you don't overlap your keyframes. So to show you what this looks like, I'm going to do a zoom out on this first clip and have it go into a rotation. And then on the second clip, I'm going to have it come out of the rotation and go into a slide. So this is what it looks like when you don't overlap your keyframes. Your first set of keyframes is already over before your second set of keyframes has begun. And this is what it ultimately ends up looking like. Now that's definitely not the smoothest edit. This is because in the middle of the video, there's this awkward gap where the video is just still and not in motion. And to achieve a smooth transition, we always want the video in motion, thus we have to overlap our keyframes. So I'm gonna bring this one forward and bring this one backwards. Now let's get into graphs. So what I'm about to show you is what you should do anytime you're coming out of a transition. In this context, we're coming out of a Z-dist or scale transition. For the basic transitions like scales, rotations, and slides, I always like to use value graph. So if your graph doesn't look like mine, click here and change from speed to value. So first we want to pull this knob up, but not all the way up, and then pull this knob to the left, but not all the way to the left. So you have this pretty good distance right here, but it's not too large or too small. If the distance is too large, then your transition will be too slow. But also if it's too small, your transition will be way too fast. So you kind of just want to achieve this middle ground. Now let's do the graph going into a transition. You want to do the same thing, but instead put your knobs to the right. So I'm going to pull this one down, but not all the way down and pull this one to the right, but again, not all the way to the right. And you want to have this little distance. I'm going to repeat this technique for my second clip and then we'll see how smooth my transitions look. So this looks good, but we can take it even farther and make it a lot more smooth. So I'm going to go back down to my keyframes and I'm going to go back into the graph for my rotation keyframes. So in this context, I have a clockwise rotation. So what I like to do is to have it first rotate a little bit counterclockwise and then go into the clockwise rotation. But to do so, you're going to take this bottom knob and drag it down a little bit and also drag it to the right a little bit. Then also drag this one down. So it should look like this. So just like before, the distance of these two knobs kind of determines the speed. So the closer they are together, the faster it will rotate clockwise after rotating a little bit counterclockwise. So this is how it should look. And if you want the rotation counterclockwise to be even greater, you can just continue dragging this down. Likewise, if you want it to be less intense, you can just drag it up closer to this knob. Now I'm gonna use the same technique for this slide right transition. I'm just gonna go to the graph. So this is a slide right transition. So first we're gonna have it slide a little bit to the left and then have it slide right. So just drag this down and to the right and then drag this one down as well. And now it should look like this. Another thing that I do to make my transition smooth is to have the clip fade out towards the end. So to do this efficiently, go to layer, new, solid, and I'm going to change my color from white to black. So we want this black layer to start coming into view towards the end of the clip. So I'm just gonna hit Shift Command D on my keyboard to cut, and I'm going to delete the excess, and I'm going to do the same for the end. So it should look something like this. So click on the solid layer, hit T on your keyboard to go to the opacity. At the beginning of the layer, add your first keyframe and make it zero. Then at the end of the clip, add another keyframe and bring this to 60. Now I'm just gonna easy ease my keyframes by highlighting, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And we don't need a graph for this. I like to use a solid layer because you can just copy and paste it onto each of your clips without having to manipulate the opacity of the actual clip. So I'm just gonna hit Command C to copy. I'm gonna click on my second clip and hit Command V to paste, and I'm just going to drag it into place. And as you can see, it gives this really smooth finish. And lastly, for everyone using Transform, I wanna give you a good hack as well. So if you're using Transform, of course you wanna enable your motion blur and apply it to your two clips. But what you also wanna do is go up to Composition, Composition Settings, click on Advanced, and you wanna increase your shutter angle from 180 to anywhere from 350 to I'd say 650. So I'm just gonna do 450. To demo this, I'm going to do a clockwise rotation. And as you can see, it really does look similar to Blurmo Curves. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Bye guys.